Coming up, prepare to explore the second temple's greatest secrets. From cryptic carvings, biblical gold, fragments of the temple buildings, to the legendary foundation stone inside the Dome of the Rock. We'll open forgotten chambers, unearthed decorative stones, and hidden biblical systems. Witness the secret chambers, the well of souls, and rediscover the temple's lost glory. It's time to unlock the mysteries, unveil the secret, and bring this biblical marvel back to life. At 15, the Lost Temple Images. Let's delve into the rich heritage of Herod's Temple. No one was entirely sure what Herod's second temple in Jerusalem, Israel looked like until we started discovering ancient depictions of the second temple by studying striking visual depictions of it. No one had ever seen an image of the second temple until archaeology unveiled mysteries of the ancient world. One simple depiction of the temple was uncovered on the Barcoba coins which date to a period within the living memory of the second temple. This coin provides a reliable representation of the descriptions of the temple such as possessing four great pillars. This was created in a period of chaos so the design is very basic but it represents a first-hand witness to the second temple in Jerusalem. Other examples of images from the second temple include the Magdala stone. In Magdala they found this ancient stone in a synagogue portraying items items used in the temple service, including one of the earliest images of the seven branch menorah flanked by two biblical jars used in temple service. Pillared archways depicted on the side stone may suggest the archway gates to the temple. On top of the stone is a flowery pattern found in Herod's temple and perhaps depictions of offerings of bread. Today we're in Magdala, which is where Mary Magdalene was from. This is a fishing village and it's just off the Sea of Galilee. In 2000, the nine, one of the most incredible discoveries was discovered here at Magdala. They found a stone at the center of the synagogue representing the second temple. On the top here you have this uh, beautiful pattern that looks like things you would see in the second temple. Ezekiel's vision of wheels within wheels. What you have is a representation of the second temple period in stone. At the heart of the synagogue is remember the temple because the temple is where true worship is done. Only seven uh, synagogues from the time of Christ that still uh, have been found. This is one of them. And at the heart of it, you have that incredible stone representing the temple in Jerusalem. Now, just over here, there is a stone and it's got two little bits that have been chiseled sort of out of it. That's where the wood of the scroll would, would reside. Christ, he'd roll out the scroll and he'd put the wood down there and then he could read. In Jesus' hometown of Capernaum, an image of an ornate carriage was uncovered, which hints at the Ark of the Covenant as the Torah was moved about in a wheeled shrine. At 14, surrounding walls and buildings, archaeologists are uncovering the secrets of biblical Jerusalem's towers and landmarks as we rediscover a world of architectural splendor. Because the Jewish temple represented the holiest site in Jerusalem, the rich and powerful wanted to live near to it. And surrounding the Jewish temples in Jerusalem were countless noteworthy buildings found in the Ophel by the southern wall of the Temple Mount to the recent Javati parking lot dig. The home Homes of the rich overlook the temple, like the burnt house in Upper Jerusalem, and the expensive buildings near the temple prove that the rich chose to abide near the Jewish temple in ancient Israel. So they are proving that there's something incredibly sacred on the Temple Mount, and they want to be near it, they want to see it, the powerful stay near the rich area. So we're in the burnt house now. This was a super wealthy priestly home, all these storage vessels all these wells, the coins, the wealth that they had, perfume bottles, cooking vessels. The Lord prophesied when he was walking on his way, suffering to the cross. He said to the women, don't weep for me, weep for your children, because he knew they were going to live through this period. The temple would burn and be destroyed. A temple had stood in Jerusalem for almost a thousand years with a break between the two. And man, look at this, we've got 
of the wood that is burned, the ceilings collapsed. These would have been highly plastered, really beautiful buildings. At 13, Herod Soffit ceilings and decorations prepared to be shocked as we unveil the enchanting beauty of the intricate details that adorned the magnificent Second Temple in Jerusalem. We didn't know what Herod's temple looked like on the inside, the decorations, until modern times as archaeologists began digging up unprecedented stones. We know what the interior of Herod's temple looked like because over 500 architectural decorations and fragments from the Holy Temple have been found in Israel. These include friezes, cornices, soffit ceiling, cofferings, door frames, column basins, drums and capitals, all found in the Holy City of the Jews. This item was discovered in the Ophel, the southern part of the temple area, probably from a ceiling panel going through the triple gates to the temple or from a temple room in the Royal Stoa. These temple decorations dug from the ground or reused in ancient walls show that Herod Herod's temple included decorations in diamond shapes, circles, rectangles and geometric panelling. Dr. Orek Peleg Barak is one of the experts researching and discovering the secret of King Herod's temple. We have 500 or more pieces of the decorations from Herod's temple which can be studied and we can discover by studying them the intricate details of the temple. At 12, the Well of Souls mosaic. Evidence for the Jewish temple can be marshaled inside the Dome of the Rock in Israel. Most non-Muslims are forbidden to enter this site, but if you're an author, archaeologist or explorer, you may be granted special permission. When you enter this Muslim shrine on the Temple Mount, you survey the vast octagonal arcade of 24 piers and columns under the colourful dome, but there's a secret stairway. You go down these steps and underneath the carpet it, there is hidden these ancient mosaics. We have ancient paintings showing what these mosaics look like and photos from the modern period. There's a secret room. Paintings and photos suggest this style of mosaic is Herodian in nature, dating them back to the time of Jesus. If we were allowed to study them, we could date them, but because we cannot, they appear to be quite similar to something from Herod's time. They may be from Herod's temple, and if studies were permitted, this could be confirmed. Until then, the mystery continues. At 11, Herodian paving in situ on the Temple Mount. Have you ever wondered whatever happened to the great stones that King Herod used on the Temple Mount to build the platform? The truth is, they're still there. You just have to look down beneath your feet and examine the stones. The style of stones that King Herod used on the Temple Mount can be found in different areas. When King Herod extended the Temple Mount in preparation to build a larger second Jewish temple, he utilized a particular style of stone from a quarry in Jerusalem. Where the Dome of the Rock now stands is where Herod's temple used to stand. Some of these ancient stones can be encountered below your feet as you walk on the Temple Mount. Now some of those stones have been covered but as you walk about the Temple Mount and also other places in Jerusalem like a part of the route on the Via della Rosa you can see ancient first century stones still there in situ placed there by King Herod's men. So remember look down to survey the history as it comes alive. At 10, Jerusalem's underground structures. Did you know you can see underground water systems used by the ancient Jews? Today, if you go beneath the surface of Jerusalem through ancient water tunnels to the northwest of the Temple Mount area, you can find the ancient Sparrow Pool that sourced water for the temple and the Antonia Fortress. This pool was built by King Herod and is presently divided into two parts. One part is drained and is under control of the Sisters of Zion and this part is near the foundations of Herod's temple. They built a wall there to protect that area so that they wouldn't be attacked. The wall in front was constructed to defend the Sisters of Zion complex from underground attack. You can walk through ancient tunnels that were used to divert water to the temple. The Struthian pool can be translated as the Sparrow Pool.
At nine, Jesus' ministry in the temple. Did you know the temple occupied a critical role in the life of Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus' ministry in the temple can be cross-referenced with ancient sources to clarify the layout and design of the temple. As an example, the temple courts are mentioned 34 times in the Gospels and the Book of Acts, and they mention Solomon's porch three times. The first century historian Josephus says King Solomon added one cluster on the east of the Temple Mount which became known as Solomon's Porch. It was in this porch that Jesus taught and where the early church met. Therefore by cross-referencing maps and archaeological discoveries with ancient roads we can develop an accurate description of what gates Jesus and his followers entered and left the temple from. Jesus walked into the courts. Jesus taught in Solomon's Porch. These kind of things, the altar and the gold that Christ references. If you cross-reference what Christ said with archaeological data, ancient Jewish writings, it helps build up a map of the temple and it helps us to understand how the second temple in Jerusalem actually functioned. Eight, the foundation stone. Inside the shrine known as the Dome of the Rock is the foundation stone itself, known to the Jews as the navel of the earth. Some believe this was the heart of the Jewish temple in Israel, where the Ark of the Covenant stood. And a carved area similar to the Ark can be found within the rock. Regrettably, each generation has removed pieces from the original bedrock, altering its original shape. And when the Romans destroyed the second temple in AD 70, they dug up its foundation, damaging this rock in the process. Later, Christian pilgrims carved pieces out of the rock souvenirs, so the Crusaders covered it like they did with the Tomb of Christ. Lamentably, the rock was damaged when this was removed in another conquest. If you go inside the Dome of the Rock, you can see the ancient bedrock itself. Today, leading Jewish rabbis cannot agree if this was the heart of the temple where creation began and Abraham offered his son to God, or if this was an area sanctified by Solomon for the vast sacrifices made on the Temple Mount. This rock was actually an altar used by King Solomon for the enormous thousands and thousands of sacrifices that had to be made. The reason they say that is because underneath the rock is a chamber, then there's a second seal chamber, and then there's a tunnel. So it's perfect if you made sacrifices on this rock, the blood would go through the two chambers into the tunnel and out of Jerusalem. Therefore, some rabbis tell all Jews to never walk on the Temple Mount for fear of trespassing the holy places. Others say they know the temple stood over this ancient bedrock, and as long as they walk far from it, they are sheltered from God's wrath. So the Jews are not clear on where exactly the temple stood. Some say it's 100% certain this is the sacred rock used at the heart of the temple where the Ark of the Covenant stood. Others say, no, the temple was elsewhere. This was the altar of sacrifice. At seven, the priest's court marble floor. Do you realize ancient parts of the Jewish temple can still be found on the Temple Mount today? Ancient sources tell us that the priest's court in Herod's temple possessed a marble floor so that the blood of the sacrifices did not seep into the limestone rock found elsewhere on the temple. In the first century book, War of the Jews, we are told, and that stone was white marble. This marble stayed cool in the summer, which assisted the priest as they walked barefoot in the holy place so you can actually direct the blood away from the temple and remnants of the white marble can be found on the temple mount today. You can still find pieces of marble that have been reused all over the temple. Now we're not allowed to study them, we're not allowed to date them so we don't know if it's from Herod's temple but it's more than likely until the studies are allowed the mystery continues. at six, gold from the Jewish temple. Have we found evidence for melted gold from the second temple in Jerusalem? When you walk on the Temple Mount, there's the open air museum and you can see these capitals that once stood on top of great columns. On the Temple Mount and around Jerusalem, several Corinthian columns and capitals exist, which date back to the time of King Herod's temple. If you look carefully at the delicate Corinthian capitals from the time of Jesus, you can find ancient rust and inside 
inside, you can see tiny flickers of ancient melted gold from the great fire that destroyed the Jewish temple. You can see the little bits of gold that have been melted and still exist there. This is evidence for the violence that destroyed the temple that Jesus knew. Most of the column capitals on display in the open air museum on the Temple Mount are from different Muslim periods with their capitals tending to be heavy in design with thick protrusions. Others are latticed in design but a few of these column capitals are from the time of Jesus. Now in a normal period this would be studied and analysed but all of that's forbidden. It's the Temple Mount. Everybody wants a piece of the temple. At five, fragments of the temple. Can we unlock the secrets of the second temple in Jerusalem? Remarkably, we possess stones and fragments from the second Jewish temple in Jerusalem. These include stones reused from the temple in other buildings, so those unearthed. If you look around Jerusalem, you can see ancient stones from the temple that have been reused. By examining these stones, we can identify patterns that were employed on Herod's temple and were considered sacred to the Jews. The meander symbol mimics the twists and turns of the Jordan River and the patterns of flowers are noted in Solomon's temple too. Due to these finds we can see inside the temple of Jerusalem. In this Jewish temple and later synagogues the Jews were content to borrow technology from the Greco-Roman world such as paving their floors with elaborate mosaic as long as they remain within the constraints of scripture. The Jews didn't have a problem borrowing from the Greco-Roman world in terms of art and design as long as it was within the tradition and constrictions of Torah. So we're at the bottom of the temple mount here. Here we've got the remains of the buildings from the temple that were destroyed and thrown down. So this looks like a foundation piece from the royal stoa, the great column building that stood up there. This is a remarkable piece of stone that came down from the temple mount. Gives you some of the ideas of the carvings involved in the temple complex and buildings. This here is Alaska Mosque. So Herod had this building called the Royal Stoa. It was in a huge place with massive columns at the base of columns here. And Josephus tells us about it. He tells us about enormous columns. Look at these broken columns here. All these columns are left over, broken, smashed. So look at this one. So there's a thought that many of these could have come from Herod's temple and the Romans destroyed it all. And then they've tried to reuse what they can reuse, but the rest are just left here, smashed this one everywhere. Number four, the fleur-de-lis second commonwealth symbol. Did you know that stones from the second temple were returned to the temple mount to be reused? This forgotten stone was part of King Herod's temple and was taken back to the Temple Mount and left here. The flowery symbol which represents the second Commonwealth period when the Jews were free and independent that was carved into the second temple. Many times God instructed the Israelites in the Torah to carve flowers into the temple and onto its items such as the menorah. Moses possessed a staff that budded and Israel is compared to a flower in the Bible which is why flowers adorned the temples in Jerusalem. Stones from the ancient temple that were thrown down were brought back up onto the temple to be reused. At three, the priest's golden bell. Have archaeologists discovered an ancient item worn by the temple priests? Something shocking was discovered in the drainage tunnels of Jerusalem that came from the Temple Mount. Moses required the priests to wear golden bells on their garments, and one of these second temple bells had been found around Jerusalem, which fell from the priest's clothing and was rediscovered 2,000 years later in the drainage tunnels from the Jewish temple. 2. Muslim Leaders Testimonies For centuries, Muslim leaders celebrated the fact that the Dome of the Rock was built on top of the site where Solomon's Temple and Herod's Temple once stood. In 1925, they published a book declaring its identity with the site of Solomon's Temple is beyond dispute. It was beyond dispute that this was the site of Solomon's Temple. Now, in the modern era, politics has meant that there's been temple denial which is spread across the world. But the archaeological evidence and Muslim testimonies testimonies from centuries are all clear. The second temple and the first temple of the Jews stood on the Temple Mount. 
at one eyewitness accounts. When the ancient Jews realized that the temple was not going to be rebuilt in their lifetime, they began to write down descriptions of what the temple looked like and how it operated in preparation for the third temple in Jerusalem to be built. Around the Sea of Galilee in Sepphoris and other Jewish strongholds in ancient Israel, the sacred knowledge of the temple life was written down and passed on. And combining this with the New Testament descriptions, it provides us with many eyewitness accounts of the life of the second temple in Jerusalem, ancient Israel. You get a good idea of how the second temple operated. Here at Hamat Tiberius, you have these beautiful natural hot springs which were incorporated into the city. So this is a recreation of what the synagogue from the 4th century to the 5th century would have looked like. So today we're at the Hamat National Park. There's hot springs here. They vary around the park from 30 degrees to 40 degrees heat. But there's also an amazing ruins of a synagogue with this amazing mosaic you can see behind me. You've got what they believed was the Ark of the Covenant. That's how they portrayed it. You've got the menorah. This is so large and amazing to see. So you see the outside of the synagogue here. So it's quite important. The big question is what happens after the temple falls? How do you continue Judaism? And the Sanhedrin are debating that subject here. And how do we continue Judaism without a temple? And this is how we get the oral tradition of the Talmud. And you have the continuation of Jewish thought and idea. So that you can have synagogues all around the world talking about continuing their faith, continuing their belief. Next year, they'll be back in Jerusalem.